Is it worth spending four times more cash on the M2 Max Mac Studio compared to the new $600 M4 Mac Mini? Well, we're gonna find out in this video because we ran our entire suite of benchmarks and the results are very interesting. The craziest thing is you can buy four of these Mac Minis for the same price as this upgraded M2 Max. Actually, I lied. On Amazon, it's even cheaper. Only $550 if you click that little coupon box. I'll leave the link below. So with that said, let's jump right into the benchmarks. But first, here is the spec sheet so you can see the differences. Of course, the Mac Studio has four times more storage up to a one terabyte SSD. So that's a big price difference. It also has double the RAM and a lot more graphics cores, which will have a huge impact on the graphics test later on. First off, we have the SSD storage speed test. And you can see the read speed is a lot faster on the Mac Studio, close to 5,000 megabytes per second read compared to 3,000 on the M4, but take a look at the write speed. This is three times faster, 6,000 instead of 2,000, and that's because it has more NAND chips, and even if you upgrade this to a one terabyte SSD, it won't be as fast because this is limited to PCI Express 3.0 speeds compared to PCIe 4, which is why I recommend you buy this. This is a Sabrent Nano SSD. It's two terabytes of storage for 200 bucks right now on Amazon, double of what you get in the Mac Studio, and this is just fine for most people with the Mac Mini. Now getting into performance with Geekbench 6, in terms of single core, the Mac Mini is basically a thousand points higher, which means that everything is gonna feel more snappy and apps are gonna open up more quickly. And in terms of the real world, we can take a look at Speedometer 3.0, where you can see it's quite a lot faster in terms of web browsing and web-based apps, which we actually tested Figma Web Design. This right here is a project provided to us from 500 Designs, one of the best design studios based out of California. And the crazy thing is the M4 Mac Mini beat the M2 Max Mac Studio. It's four seconds faster for web design. Can you believe it? Four seconds faster and it's four times less money. But of course, what really matters for high-end CPU workloads is the multi-core. So here's Geekbench 6 and take a look at that almost the same performance with this $600 M4 Mac Mini. That is so impressive. But what totally shocked me was that this thing is actually faster in 100% workload CPU rendering in Cinebench. But before I jump into that, I want to go through some graphics related tasks. First off, we have Geekbench 6's metal test. Here you can see that the M2 Max Mac Studio is two and a half times faster in terms of raw graphics performance. Of course, keep in mind, this is a 10 core GPU versus 38 core GPU. And then if we bring that into a more gaming related workload like 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme, which is very mobile optimized. Some people say it's not as accurate, but here we're getting basically the same results. 150 FPS compared to about 58 on the Mac Mini. That's a massive, massive difference. And if you're curious about the actual power usage, well, it makes sense when you look at this because this thing takes 50.92 watts peak power in 3 Mark Wildlife Extreme compared to 21.97. Yeah, it uses a lot more power. But first, have you ever wanted to buy something for a Black Friday sale like this M4 Mac Mini, but couldn't because you forgot your PayPal password? Thankfully, our sponsor Keeper Security has a built-in password generator that creates strong, unique passwords and stores them in an encrypted vault, automatically filling your credentials on any device when you log into your accounts. It can also store vital encrypted info like credit card details, personal notes, files, and more. So try it today using code MAXTECH40 for 40% off Keeper personal and family plans by using the link below. And then for the most accurate comparison in terms of real-world gaming performance. We also tested 3D Mark's Steel Nomad Lite, which is basically the most recent benchmark, which is supposed to be very real world. Well, here you can see over twice as fast for the M2 Max Mac Studio. However, things completely flip when you consider the fact that the M4 supports ray tracing with dedicated ray tracing cores while the M2 series does not, which completely changes the scores. But first, I do wanna go into Cinebench's multi-core 10 minute stress test where we saw some insane results. Check this out, guys. The M4 Mac Mini 
outperformed the Mac Studio. 948 points compared to 931. How did it do it? Well, it's because it's running its performance cores at 3.94 gigahertz, all of them, compared to only 3.68 gigahertz on the Mac Studio. And even crazier, this thing takes less power in that test. We saw a peak of 22.64 watts compared to 33 watts peak with the M2 Max. This thing is an efficiency powerhouse with those new M4 cores. The only problem is that this thing thermal throttles. Yes, because it's so tiny and it has not that great of a cooling system, which you guys saw during our teardown, it's very, very small and compact. Not that great compared to our teardown of this M2 Max Max Studio. Massive heat sink, huge cooling system in this thing. Well, what basically happened with the M4 Mac Mini is that it kept kind of throttling down the performance core clock speed without actually ramping up the fans too high. It ramped it up to about 2000, but it was basically silent. Apple could have made them go up high to have no throttling at all, but they chose to keep it quiet. I actually tested it with TG Pro, where I maxed out the fans and I got higher performance, but the fans were quite loud. The Mac Studio is completely silent the entire time. Both of the fans are literally idling at a thousand RPMs. You can't hear nothing. And even with idle fans, it only went up to 69 degrees Celsius for the hottest CPU temp, compared to this thing hitting 102 Celsius, which is still fine. Usually 108 is the limit that Apple keeps it at. But regardless, the main point is that this thing outperforms the Mac Studio in 100% CPU rendering. And how does that translate to real world performance? Well, we tested Xcode for all of you programmers out there, and here the M4 was slower, but it wasn't that big of a difference. It was only 17 seconds slower. And if you consider the price difference, literally four times less money, 600 instead of 2,400, and it's only 17 seconds slower. I've got to say that's very impressive. You could buy four of these for the same price and I don't know what you're gonna do with them But you could buy four of them and then we also tested music production with logic pro This is a benchmark that kind of measures how much tracks you can run without overloading and here the Mac studio Was definitely a lot faster because it has more performance cores 194 tracks at the same time compared to 130 so this might be one of the cases where you might actually want to buy the Mac Studio instead. And then we also did some photo editing tests with Lightroom Classic, and here the Mac Studio was almost twice as fast, 28 seconds compared to 52. That is a pretty big difference with exporting 50 photos. However, the thing that blew me away is that we did the same test, but with 500 photos, and believe it or not, the $600 base M4 Mac Mini outperformed the Mac Studio by about a minute and a half. I could not believe this, but somehow it was faster. That blew me away. In terms of video editing in Final Cut Pro, we did our standard five minute 4K HEVC export test, which is basically the most common format that people film and edit in, including us. All of our videos are HEVC. And here the Mac Studio was almost twice as fast because it has double the encoders compared to what you get with the M4 Mac Mini. So for export times, it's faster, but timeline smoothness, both of them are completely smooth for most simple 4K editing, including what we do, which is very impressive. So if you don't mind waiting for the export, the Mac Mini is still good. And then for our final test, we did 3D rendering with Blender. This is the Party Tug project. And here, the Mac Studio is a lot faster because it has a lot of raw GPU performance, but the M4 is not that far behind because of ray tracing. Yes, a minute and 40 seconds compared to one minute. Yes, that is a lot faster, but if you consider the price difference, once again, I'd probably just stick with this thing. So with all those performance tests out of the way, what conclusion can we pull in terms of what you should buy? Well, last but not least, we got to compare the ports really quick. We have two USB-Cs on both the Mac Studio and the base M4 Mac Mini. Yes, they're still USB-Cs. You got to get the Ultra to get Thunderbolts on here, and you got the M4 Pro to get Thunderbolts on the front. But the Mac Studio also has an SD card slot on the front, which I find very convenient. And then in terms of the ports on the back, 
you can see that you get four Thunderbolts with the Mac Studio compared to only three on the Mac Mini. They both have HDMI. The Mac Studio gets 10 gigabit ethernet built in for free while you do have to pay extra to get it on the Mac Mini. You also get two USB-A ports on the Mac Studio, which is nice if you have some legacy devices. And finally, you have the headphone jack and the power button, while the Mac Mini actually gets the headphone jack on the front, which I find more convenient, and the power button's on the bottom, which isn't as convenient, but it's not a big deal. So with that said, which one should you buy? Well, to be completely honest, for most things, Literally just buy the $600 Mac Mini, the value is insane, and in some tests it actually beats it, or it gets close, like web design was faster. Exporting 500 photos was faster. And some of the other real world tests were just a little bit slower, like Xcode, for example, and with Logic, 130 tracks versus 190, it's not that big of a deal. The only reason to buy the Mac Studio is for the better graphics performance, specifically for gaming, but who does gaming on machines like this? And in that case, you should definitely just be waiting for the M4 Max Mac Studio. But the biggest conclusion we can get is Apple, thank you, bravo for giving us such good performance for only 600 bucks or even $550 right now on Amazon. I'll leave the link below. Shocking, shocking value. You can get four of these for the same price as a Mac Studio, which blows my mind. Don't forget, if you're worried about the storage situation, this thing is a great deal. I definitely recommend it. Link below as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Buy the M4 Mac Mini. You're not gonna regret it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe above because we've got more tests coming and check out one of those two right there. We'll see you in the next video.